Hello and welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This is the show where we answer the questions that you find in the comments below. So if you have a question, hashtag Ask GMBN Tech. It can be about anything tech, have at it, and we will do our best to answer them. So first question is from Patrick Stegner, and he says, Hi, Doddy and Henry. On my wife's new bike, when I pull the front brake and try to move the bike forwards and backwards, it seems like there is something loose or have some serious slack. But the headset and caliper are tightened and don't have any slack at all. When I check it, the fork doesn't have slack too. What could this be? So he also says that his wife, the bike, has center lock discs. So often there is an accumulation of play developed chiefly from the brake pads being able to move around in the caliper, from the bushings of the fork, which um, that doesn't indicate whether it's, it's a good or bad fork, often really high-end performance forks will, you can actually get them reamed out to make them, you know, less diction, better performance, better sensitivity. But there is a small amount of play coming from the bushings, whether you like it or not. Um, and also those center lock discs in the rivets there, they can also just move just a little. Now, this isn't much, it's absolutely tiny, but it's magnified by the wheel being bigger than, you know, than the hub, so it kind of exaggerates the leverage. I would say whenever I'm checking play and headsets, that sort of thing, if you go with your front wheel against a wall, then it hasn't got anywhere to go, and put your hand on the headset, yeah, and just rock it through there. Similarly, if you don't have a wall, <laughs> maybe you're outside, um, if you turn the handlebars to 90 degrees and go that way, it can really help reduce all that play, which, although very small, accumulatively adds up to something that, yeah, it's definitely, you can definitely feel it. Um, so it's probably actually no problems with the bike. It's just uh, those things throwing up a few false flags. But yeah, next question, which is from Caleb Teresi. And he says, they recently bought some new brakes and they have a very different lever feel to the last ones, which is, yeah, brands differ. There's a lot of lever movement before the pads actually make contact with the rotor, so a lot of throw. So can you bleed the brakes in any way that you can put extra mineral oil into the system so the piston sits further out while it's in its neutral position to reduce the lever throw? Well, indeed you can. So you've got two ways to go about this. You've got the quick and convenient way, which is when you get something that is just narrower than a disc. Often those kind of metal rulers from Park actually are really good. You can slide them in there, pump the, um, the lever, and it will actually bring the pads out just a little, or the, the pistons out just a little, and draw air in up into the lever so that it will feel nice and supported. This way doesn't tend to last, especially on hot, heavy descents, but for cross-country riding, it'll probably actually do it really, really well. The second way, which is, like I said, a slightly more arduous process, but nothing too bad, is if you get one of those yellow Shimano bleed blocks, or actually whatever brand it is you're having, I'm assuming it's Shimano, funnily, and um, if you file down the brake block itself, just a bit, it doesn't need to be much, maybe a mil, maybe a mil and a half, and then bleed the brake because you'll actually essentially be over bleeding, bleeding the system. Um, and yeah, it will definitely reduce that throw. You might get issues when the heat builds into the rotor and it starts to warp slightly, it might tick, um, but you know, it's, it is a trade-off, it is a compromise. Um, but once you have that bleed block, then that's the, the throw you want. And if you keep hold of it, you can actually get quite a consistent feel. So I hope that helps. Next question is from Hyperline Art. And they say they have some 2010 Fox 36 Van R forks. And he's basically getting some of the um, black stuff you get when you mix oil or dirt. I know the stuff. And um, basically the seals seem to be leaking some oil. Do I know which parts could be damaged? Well, there are kind of easier ways to identify this. If it's on your spring side, so where you put your air in or usually on the left side on Fox forks. If it's blown there, it will probably be just, just be the wiper seal. Um, and yeah, there, there is a relatively small amount of oil in that lower for lubrication purposes, and it means the seal's just gone. So that's relatively simple to replace and not too expensive. However, if it's on the right-hand side and it is really leaking a lot of oil, I would, I'm assuming that these forks have an open bath, which means that the damper isn't a sealed cartridge, but essentially a plunger going into a pool of oil. And that can sometimes migrate into the lower, which can then sometimes blow up the seal going up. So it could be a bit of a bigger job. If there are gallons of oil, then yeah, it's probably something slightly bigger, but you can get parts of them and, um, and they are serviceable, but I wouldn't be able to tell you straight off the bat which seal it is. Um, 
yeah, there's no way I could distinguish that without seeing the fork, sadly. Um, but I hope you find out. It shouldn't be too much of a worry either way. Next question is from Electrify HD, and he says, why don't they make oil slick stanchions? Well, good question. They do. Well, they used to anyway. SRAM used to have the black box program, which was actually a really cool piece of kit, even though it never made it to production. But if you go back to when, you know, the Syndicate boys are running them and Sam Hill, all those kind of black box riders, I think in probably about 2010, the forks did have that iridescent kind of gleaming of oil slick on them. And as far as I'm aware, although it's really hard to find information on them, what it actually was, was instead of making the fork surface incredibly smooth, which is what you'd do now to reduce friction, they basically made it so it was basically almost ribbed. And what that meant is oil could sit in those small, in those small kind of undulations in the fork surface. So the oil was actually, it wasn't oil slick in the sense of a manufacturing process, it was literally oil slick on the surface. Um, apparently they took a lot of maintenance work, but they were fantastic. And if you look up, um, I'm pretty sure from like three minute gaps, you know, in Fort William, I remember just seeing footage of Sam Hill and Greg Menard's bikes working so well through those um, fast, repet repetitive hits at Fort William. Um, so yeah, they do, but the, what we're gonna get onto is actually another question about oil slicks. I'm gonna team that in and it's from Mark Iffy and he says, what the hell is oil slick cassette? So oil slicking is actually a thing called, and I'm gonna read it because I definitely didn't remember, physical vapor deposition, which basically is a treatment and it's a film you put on stuff. So when you see an oil slick cassette in the same way, you know, you do see um, the gold stuff that SRAM brought out, it's just a treatment, it's essentially a thin film. Um, with fork legs, you kind of get that hard black anodizing and it's a relatively similar process. Um, so I'm sure somebody somewhere probably does oil slick stuff, but it's it's not performance game gain. Um, in regards to Mark's question, what the hell is an oil slick cassette? It's the exact same. It's just got a slightly flashier um, appearance, but it is just a film that's put onto it at the end. It does look quite cool. It comes from BMX. They had a huge fad of it a couple of years ago, although it's kind of gone out of fashion now. Um, to be honest, last year when it came out and you started seeing it, I did think it looked like breathtakingly fantastic. Now I have far surpassed saturation point already. I just look at it and I think, I don't know, you get stuff in the bike industry, they just think it's like an absolute shoe in and it just doesn't require any imagination because they're just copying what next door's doing. Um, I don't know, it just already seems tired to me and it's only been out. A lot of the stuff hasn't even hit the shelves. So sorry, bike industry, I've kind of thrown you under the bus there, but that is just how I feel. And probably most of you disagree with me anyway. Next, we have a question from Iron Gaming. So they says, I'm currently building up my own full suspension bike and I decided to buy a RockShox bike. Great fork. On the SRAM website, they recommend a max maximum disc brake size of 200 mil. Can I still use a 203 disc or should I just stick with a 180 mil disc? Well, so SRAM um, makes RockShox. They kind of own the brand Avid, although now largely they're known as SRAM, um, and they run their rotors at a 200 millimeter size. Shimano, however, and other brands use a 203, which is an old standard basis of the inch, inch measurement. So um, both absolutely fine. I think it's just SRAM trying to keep in within their kind of brand language um, as much as anything. But yeah, you can run a 203 on there, absolutely no worries. You could even, if you wanted to, although I probably wouldn't recommend it, go to a 220 or 223. As long as you have the right adapter, you've got um, you've got a lot of adjustability there. The issue is it's when you go down sizes, that's the, uh, that's the issue. But in terms of it's passing through the frame and it working, yeah, it'd be absolutely fine. It just might not be nice that nice in terms of stiffness. Last question. I have a Giant Rain 2017 with a Yari fork with 160 mil of travel. I have no tokens in it and the compression open and about 20% of sag. My problem is that I never use my travel. There is always two centimeters of travel left, even when he lands really hard. What can I do? Well, this could be, well, let's look at the issue. To make sure that your bike can actually cycle through that, we need to basically um, let all the air pressure out of the fork and cycle it. That is gonna be your only way to know if the fork can get through, through all of its travel. On the Yaris, they have a damper which could be potentially overfilled, um, or you could have um, too much oil in your lower, which literally is just um, 
also having a damping effect on the fork, even if an undesired one. So that'd be my first port of call. Um, you know, the characteristics which an individual rider demands from their forks vary hugely, and I'm not gonna tell you how to set it up. But I would say, whilst you're going through that process, you've let the air out, why don't you experiment with some tokens? Maybe running slightly lower pressure. Um, and yeah, if, if you do have, um, if you do have too much oil in there, it's a relatively simple fix. On SRAM or RockShox's website, they will have an oil chart, and it literally is a case of doing what you're told, looking at the measurement, filling up a jug and or a syringe and doing it like so. Um, yeah, cycle it through the fork, and then yeah, I'd say maybe look at some uh, what ride characteristics you really want out of your fork, because going with tokens is a really popular way of maybe getting a bit more ramp up. I'm not saying you want that, but it does mean you can have your initial stroke a bit softer perhaps. So I hope that's been some help. Let me know how you get on. And, um, and that's about that. So that's it with Ask GMBN Tech. I hope you managed to get some sense out of me, or at least I was making some. Um, please keep on getting the questions in. I actually, we all do, really love these shows. Uh, nice community feel to them. So get in the comments, Ask GMBN Tech, hashtag, and um, you can pop up and maybe we can answer your question on the show. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now, if you wanna stay with the channel, want to keep it on tech, obviously. Doddy did a really cool second half to his security feature, which went out just at the weekend. So click down here for that one. And I did what I hope is quite a comprehensive look at chain length and how to change a chain, which also came out just a few days ago and click down here. As always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.